JFT just fair and direct. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to JFD's daily market review for February the 4th. I am Harala Pispisuros, head of research here at JFD, and I will talk about yesterday's main market movers, what's my opinion moving ahead, what are today's important events, and how they could, af and how they could affect the markets. But before we start, let's uh, read our disclaimer. The content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. I will leave you a few seconds uh, to read the rest, and then we will jump into our analysis. Okay, the US dollar continued to trade lower uh, against most of the other major currencies on um, on Thursday during the Asian session Friday. It gained uh, only versus uh, JPY while it was found virtually unchanged against CHF and CAT. The main gainers were the Euro and the New Zealand dollar, with the former nearly doubling the rally of the latter. Now, yesterday it was a Euro day with a common currency rallying around 200, uh, 200 pips in the aftermath of the ECB decision. What happened? The bank decided to keep its, uh, all its monetary policy tools untouched, as was widely expected, while the statement accompanying the decision was very little changed uh, from the previous one. That said, at the press conference, uh, ECB President Christine Lagarde decided to light fireworks. She said that inflation remained elevated for longer than previously thought, while the economy was hurt less than anticipated by the pandemic. And she also added that the March and June meetings will be essential for evaluating their guidance. So, in our view, this was a strong hoggish shift by Lagarde, with the main message being that they could, after all, decide to lift rates in 2022. Remember that um, uh, prior remarks uh, by her and several other of her uh, colleagues uh, were highlighting the case of uh, no liftoffs this year. Now that door is open and we may get more hints and clues at the March and June gatherings. For now, Euro traders may have uh, increased uh, bets over a potential hike by December, and they could uh, and they could continue to do so if uh, data war weren't so. Therefore, with uh, with such a strong uh, shift in the e in the ECB's uh, language, we we will also switch our stance, and we would expect the euro to continue gaining for a while more at least until data and headlines point otherwise. Now, besides the ECB decision, we also had a Bank of England monetary policy decision before uh, that of the ECB. In contrast with the ECB, this bank decided to lift interest rates and actually for the second time since the outbreak of the pandemic. Specifically, officials decided to hike by 25 basis points to 0.50% via a 5 to 4 vote. And what's impressive is that the four descenders called for a double hike, a 50 basis points hike. The pound strengthened at the time of the announcement, but it was quick uh, to give back those gains, perhaps as a 25 basis points uh, hike was already fully priced in by the markets. Now, moving ahead, we believe that um, that the pound's performance may depend on upcoming economic data as only one member needs to be convinced uh, by strong numbers to join the camp supporting a double hike at the upcoming gathering. However, for now, at least against the euro, we see the case for the pound to underperform as the hoggish shift by the ECB resulted in a bigger surprise uh, to market participants. What's more, from a technical standpoint, the euro sterling pair broke above uh, the downside resistance line drawn from the high of uh, December 8th, which uh, may have been a trend reversal uh, technical signal. As uh, for today, the big event is likely to be the US employment report for, uh, for January. 
Non-farm payrolls are expected to have slowed to 150,000 from 199,000, while the unemployment rate is forecast to have stayed unchanged at 3.9%. Average hourly earnings are expected to have slowed to 0.5 from 0.6% month over month, but barring any major deviations to the prior monthly prints, this would take the year over year rate up to 5.2% from 4.7%, which could add to expectations of further acceleration in US inflation for the months to come. In our view, the forecasts uh, point to another decent report despite the potential slowdown in the NFPs which could add credence to the Fed's, to the Fed's, uh, to the Fed's view of a March rate hike and some more during the rest of the year. Remember that the December dot plot pointed to three quarter point liftoffs uh, for 2022, but according to the Fed fund futures, investors are convinced that the committee will proceed with nearly five. Thus, if the forecasts uh, are met or even better exceeded, market participants may become more confident with regards to their view and perhaps buy dollars again. Now, as for the rest of uh, today's events, at the same time with the US employment report, we get jobs data for January from Canada as well. The unemployment rate is forecast to have risen to 6.2% from 5.9%, while the, while the employment change is anticipated to show that the Canadian economy has lost 117.5 thousand jobs after adding 54.7 thousand in December. A weak report could hurt the Canadian dollar, but not much in our view, as last week the Bank of Canada provided, provided strong signals with regards to a rate hike in March, and we don't believe that these numbers could change that. So that's it uh, from me. Thank you very much for watching and listening. For those who are interested in learning about the main events of the week much earlier, you can subscribe to the Weekly Market Outlook webinar, which I'm holding every Monday at 8 o'clock AM GMT. You can find the link in the description below. So, goodbye, have a great day, a greater weekend, and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again next week. JFT, just fair and direct.